Hello, in this video we're going to go over the proof of the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality. First of all, what does the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality state and then how do we prove that? So the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality states that if x1 through xn are non-negative real numbers, then the arithmetic mean which is the sum of x1 through xn divided by n is at least the geometric mean which is the nth root of the product of x1 through xn. And in addition to that it also tells us that equality holds if and only if x1 through xn are the same. So there is uh, there are many different ways of proving this. Um, there is one favorite, I have one favorite uh, proof for this one that I'm going to present. But let's just start with uh, special cases, uh, small values. There are in fact a little bit of a stronger versions of this inequality when n is different values. So for example, if n is equal to 1, what we are going to get is we are trying to prove x1 plus x2 over 2 is at least square root of x1, x2. So this is the same as if I multiply both sides by 2 and move 2x1, x2 to root x1, x2 to the other side, we get this. And this is equivalent to since x1 and x2 are non-negative, we can write it down as a perfect square and that's greater than or equal to zero. And this is called the trivial inequality and the equality holds if and only if square root of x1 is equal to square root of x2, which is to say x1 is equal to x2. Now in order to prove this one for n equals 3, there are certain ways of uh, proving this one for n equals 3. So one way of doing that would be to use this identity. So this is an interesting identity that you want to know. If you look at x1 cubed plus x2 cubed plus x3 cubed minus 3x1 x2 x3, that can be factored as x1 plus x2 plus x3 times x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared minus x1 x2 minus x2 x3 and minus x1 x3. The second parentheses can be written as 1 half x1 minus x2 squared plus x2 minus x3 squared plus x1 minus x3 squared. Now if x1 x2 x3 are all positive then we would get that these three are all positive and this whole thing is also greater than or equal to zero. So that means if I replace x1 by, if I replace xj by cube root of xj, what you're going to get is x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 3 cube root of x1 x2 x3 is equal to the sum of cube roots cube root of x1 plus cube root of x2 plus cube root of x3 times a half of that sum of squares cube root of x1 minus x cube root of x2 squared plus cube root of x1 minus cube root of x3 squared plus cube root of x2 minus cube root of x3 squared. And this is greater than or equal to 0 because x1, x2, x3 are all non-negative. And the equality holds if and only if cube root of x1 plus cube root of x2 plus cube root of x3 is 0, which means x1, x2, x3 are all 0, or the other expression is 0. The other expression is only 0 if x1 and x2 and x3 are all 0. And the first expression is 0 if all of the x1, x2, x3 are 0. Okay, so in, in fact for n equals 3 we get a little bit of a stronger inequality which is to say this is always greater than or equal to 0 as long as the sum of the cube roots is at least 0. Unfortunately this method does not work for, x, uh, for n equals say 5. But for n equals 4 we can prove that if you take x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 divided by 4, that's the arithmetic mean, we could write it down as x1 plus x2 over 2 plus x3 plus x4 over 2, all of that over 2. Now, arithmetic mean geometric mean tells you this is greater than or equal to square root of, I'm going to use it for the case n equals 2, so it's the 
product of these two take and then take the square root and then we're going to use amgm again so this is the square root of x1 x2 times the square root of x3 x4 and this is exactly the fourth root of x1 x2 x3 and x4 so it proves it for any cause 4 and now when does the equality hold we're going to go over this one and see when the equality holds in each step here the equality holds when x1 plus x2 over 2 is the same as x3 plus x4 over 2. Here the equality holds when x1 is equal to x2 and x3 is equal to x4. And this would have to be x4. And this is the same as saying all of the x1 through x4 are the same. Okay, for n equals 5, we can't really do something like this. But for n equals 8, we can prove this. And for n equals 16, we can prove the same. Uh, we can prove it using the same method. So here's what we're going to do. Claim is that the amgm is true for n equals 2 to the power of k for k in n. So we're going to prove this one. We're going to prove the AMGM for powers of 2. Basis step for uh, k equals 1 was proved already. So we're going to go from, we're gonna, we do that by induction. We're going to go from x1 through xn to x1 through 2xn. So we'll take x1 through x2 to the power of k plus x2 to the power of k plus 1 all the way to x2 to the power of k plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of k plus 1. This is greater than or equal to square root of x1 through xn, which is 2 to the power of k, I'll just, for simplicity, I'll just replace that by n, divided by n times xn plus 1 through x2n divided by n. I'm using the basis step. Then I'm using the inductive hypothesis. So this is the nth root of x1 through xn, and then the nth root of xn plus 1 through x2n. And that is the 2nth root of x1 through x2n. Now we will see when the equality holds. Equality holds if and only if we're going to go through each one of these inequalities. For this one to hold, equality to hold, we need x1 through xn over n to be the same as xn plus 1 through x2n over n. For the inequality, for the equality to hold here, we need x1 through xn to be the same. And because we used amgm for x1 through xn, and xn plus 1 through x2n to be the same. And this is exactly saying x1 through x2n must be the same. So this proves it for powers of 2. Now, how do we prove it for something that is not a power of 2? Here's what we're going to do. So assume n is an integer, is a positive integer. So take some power of 2 more than n. So let m be a power of 2 more than n. So basically anything more than it. And let a to be the arithmetic uh, arithmetic mean of x1 through xn. And set xn plus 1 all the way to xm to be the average. Now what we proved is that we know that if I take the average of x1 through xn all the way to xm and divide that by m, that is greater than or equal to the mth root of their product, x1 through xn, uh, all the way to xm. But this tells us this guy is n times the average, and these are all averages. These terms are all averages. These are m minus n averages divided by m, greater than or equal to mth root of. This guy is the geometric mean to the power of n, so I'll just keep that. The other parts are arithmetic mean to the power of m minus n. 
So this tells us arithmetic mean, because the left side is going to be arithmetic mean. To the power of m, if you raise both sides to the power of m, is greater than or equal to x1 through xn, a to the power of m minus n. Divide by a to the power of m minus n, you get a to the power of n is greater than or equal to x1 through xn. And that means a, which was the arithmetic mean, is greater than or equal to the nth root of the product of x1 through xn. Okay, now let's see, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So now let's see when the equality holds. So equality holds if and only if all of the inequalities that we had become equality. So we would have to have this to be equality, which means x1 through xn all the way to xm must be the same, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if you notice, I divided by a to the power of m minus n, and I uh, made some assumptions about x1 through xn being positive. If one of them is 0, then the inequality is obvious. So, in the proof above, we in fact assumed that x1 through xn are all positive. If one of them is 0, then the average is greater than or equal to the nth root of x1 through xn, which is 0. If xj is 0 for some j. And obviously the inequality is clear at that point. And the equality only holds if x1 through xn are all the same. So this brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, you can find plenty of other videos like this on my channel, either discussing the topics required for math competitions or working on problems from past competitions. I will see you in another video.